No, that's not the one. Mm -mm, that's not it. In my last video, I talked about the necessity of having something to do in one's retirement. It doesn't matter where you choose to retire. The important thing is to have something to keep you occupied during those latter years. There are tons of things you can settle on doing, but finding something that is fulfilling is the real challenge, and that seems to be a goal missed by many. In my case, my downfall is that I have watched way too many sailing videos over the last couple of years and I've come to realize that I still have this burning desire to sail off into the sunset somewhere. Terry is not all that keen about living on board a boat but I have to remind her constantly that she doesn't know any better <laughs> and that's supposed to be tongue-in-cheek humor by the way. Can you imagine having a million dollar view every morning when you wake up without owning any expensive real estate. I would love to have a catamaran just for the space and the luxury. Uh, sure, most people would. But the price on catamarans, well, you can expect to pay 50% more for the same length boat as compared to a monohull. Insurance is probably going to be more expensive also, just based on value. And I'm sure upkeep probably is a little bit more expensive. Many would argue that, but there is a saying in boat circles, double the hull, double the maintenance, but I'm not sure if that's entirely true. As I mentioned last week, I have a lead on a boat for sale in one of the local marinas here, and today I have an appointment with the owner to view that boat. Earlier in the week, I stayed busy scouring online resources in an attempt to brush up on a few things. One thing I discovered is that the sailboat market right now is hot, at least in some locations. I can only imagine what the driving force is behind all these sails. Here in Guam, there are only a few boats to be had. Some are pricey, some not so much, and in like everything else, price mostly speaks to condition. My search is for a monohull, and one that is blue water ready, or at least close enough that with a few upgrades, she will be. Today I'm looking at a Tartan 37 footer built in 1978. At first glance, she looks to be in fairly good condition, but I need to get on board for a better inspection. Normally when someone is looking to purchase a boat, especially one that would be considered a high value purchase, a survey completed by a marine surveyor might be the best course of action. If a loan is to be pursued in purchasing a boat, most banks will require a survey. Also, there would be a sea trial performed to experience the vessel and all systems in action, including the motor, sails, rudder, and any other important system of concern. The systems on board a boat are always finicky, even when in constant use and during the best of times, but when boat systems go unused, it's a surefire way to experience failures when you don't need them the most. And that conceptually makes it difficult in making accurate assessments when looking at any boat. I have to constantly remind myself that there is no such thing as a perfect boat. And strangely enough, when it seems like everything and all systems on a boat are working, it's probably too good to be true. And, well, saltwater boats, I probably need not say any more. I spent a couple hours on the boat this day, and I took some notes, and now I'll wait on the owner to provide me an inventory of everything that comes with the boat, including sails, electronics, spare parts, tools, or any other accessories that would be included. Until then, I'm still keeping my eyes and options open. Since there's no boat lift at this marina, you just can't get the boat out of the water to make a good bottom inspection. So it's almost certain that an underwater inspection will need to take place. And I guess we'll cross that pontoon if and when we ever get to it, I suppose. Later this day, we uh, made an early evening visit to Carabra Brewery, a local brewery and pub. And we enjoyed a couple of local beers uh, during the early evening hours. One drink's growing, the other one's shrinking. <laughs> 
This is your second one. Yeah, it's my second one. Then we took a short walk downtown to the park and checked out all the food trucks and everything else that was cooking there. Everybody's wearing masks outside. Then it was back home for some more boat browsing online, only to get lost in some more sailing adventures. Thanks for watching.